Hello. It's Don. Man, those lights. Yeah. Hey, it's Don from the Nearly Historical Railroad Channel. So in the last video, we were working on Kenosha Pass and I stopped, um, got some more glue sticks. So that's good, because we need that for that. We're gonna continue working on that. Plus there's other stuff going on. I'm gonna show you something up in the tourist town area that my dad's working on, something we haven't ever talked about. All right. So up this mountain is our little tourist town we're working on. This is not where the buildings go and everything. We're, uh, whatever, moving stuff around and just working on stuff. But the whole point is we actually redid a lot of the track that was up here. And there was this tunnel uh, with this wood um, kind of snow shed almost thing coming out of it. Well, we added this track right here so that we could have this extra little siding up in this little town. Um, but, you know, well, the tunnel needs work now. This turnout, for what it's worth, is in the mountain. And we've talked about actually moving it out of the mountain and not having a tunnel so you could access it from this side. But to be honest, I think it's actually hard to get to from this side. So it's actually easier to access that turnout from with inside the mountain. So we've left it. But this wood structure needs to be modified and added on to. So my dad is working on that. And when I came over here, I discovered this, a paper template. <laughs> so let's go check in on my dad real quick and see uh, what he's doing to add on to that. So the side of this is actually some of the existing wall that was there, but he's adding on this roof and then in the front side, and this will all cover that extra siding that's coming out up there. So he's building it to match the existing one. So that's more progress for the tourist town area. Okay, um, I'm gonna show you where we left off at Kenosha Pass over here. Here is Kenosha Pass. I see a train has moved since I've been here. So we started getting those cardboard in so we have some support to build our mountain off of. And this bridge, I actually remembered to bring the pieces for this. So this is good. And I, I stopped in the last video short of securing these. And I'm glad I did because once I left, I started thinking about it and it's like, I put these blocks on here for the bridge abutments to sit on. But then I thought, man, those things are huge. They don't need to stick out this far. So I'm gonna change those out before I secure these down. Like I said, I had the bridge pieces so we can make sure the distance of this is actually correct. And we will continue on with doing the cardboard part. I got more glue sticks because we're getting low. Uh, so in one of the past videos, Someone had asked me why we were using a powered ground throw for the frog. Um, and I answered that in the comment, so I'm not gonna go over that, but, but it got me thinking. And what I thought about is like, this is all gonna be closed into a mountain and I'm not gonna ever be able to access underneath this again. If this thing ever breaks in some weird way or fails, I'm not really gonna be able to replace it and be able to hook up wires underneath here. So the other I, day, I actually, it's hard to see, but I added, another wire here. That wire goes to the frog of this turnout and it just goes down below the bottom of the layout underneath basically. It's not connected to anything. I just put it there so that, again, if this thing fails, I can just hook up a frog juicer uh, to that extra wire I ran. It's already there. I don't have to try and reach up inside of here and try to solder something. Um, it's in place just for future, you know, in case there's an issue. So all I did was back the train up from over there to here, but it worked fine. And so, it's like sometimes I forget you can run trains. That's kind of cool. <laughs> all right, 
Got my little bridge stuff. Um, so I'm gonna cut these out, see how they fit here. Okay, I got these cut out, and I just wanted to show you, these are kind of cool. They're actually nicely detailed, um, and it's actually uh, detailed on both sides. And it's just, you know, two of these, and that's it. That's all you get, but that's, that's all I think I really need. So, let's see how this is gonna work. Yeah, I think these go where it says bridge. So I drew a line there. So one will be there, that's 40 scale feet. Another 40 scale feet, and look at that right on the end of my line. I uh, added 40 and 40 together, came up with 80, but it had to be scale feet. But it actually worked. It's actually right. So I think that's gonna work good. I will come up with some kind of center support, I think, for here. And as I predicted, the wood, um, that this is on. This is why I'm using these girder things, is because I didn't want to cut into this and break that all up because it's nice and strong. It's like, I'm just gonna slap something on the side of this. And as I predicted, the wood is a little thicker, not much. Um, the track is above this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put these on the side and you're only gonna see this bridge from this angle. You're never gonna see this side of it. So I'm going to take uh, probably some square styrene um, and just run a square piece around across the top and that will make it a little bit taller. And then I'll take that same square piece of styrene and put, put it across the top over here. So the top edge will look the same, but this backside won't have any of this stuff and you'll never see it. So I'll make it a little thicker and it'll kind of hide the fact that there's actually nothing back here, but the top edge will all look uniform and the same. This is cool, all right. So again, this area is a little uh, hard to uh, have the camera set up on the tripod and me running back and forth to do stuff. And I'm going to continue working on this and then I'll come back and give you an update. All right. I'm actually, obviously just experimenting, but finding out that if uh, this paint came out a little bit dark than I wanted to, but if I kind of dry brush it more so on there and wipe it with a damp paper towel, Smear it around to lighten it up. So it seems to be working fairly well. little bit of an update um, I put this ground in here for the bottom since I uh, since this bridge is kind of more of a recent idea um, I decided that this canyon will eh, this canyon will actually start kind of back here and loop and go underneath this and flow out that way we always wanted to have these two bridges but I was never really sure where the water is coming from and putting this bridge in gives us an answer. So this is good. I put this board here for um, doesn't center support, whatever it is for the bridge. Um, we'll probably make this, you know, like a concrete, probably not concrete, but cobblestone or, or some kind of, you know, support and then metal beams coming up off of that. So this gives us a nice base. So I was just kind of trying to figure out uh, how this is going to come down because we're going to get out the hot glue gun start doing more of this uh, cardboard stuff Down this way, so I got to figure out what's going on here. I think I'm going to have a retaining wall Maybe back behind this and then it goes up Cliff comes down to here something like that. So anyways, I got this board in it's all secured. That's all secured so this is um, good forward progress So my dad has painted the other part of the tunnel portal and has set it in there. Uh, we actually think it's a really good match. We'll take a closer look at it. This wall here was part of the original tunnel, um, but we've pulled it out this way and he's rebuilt the roof, including all the little detail 
pieces going across there. Um, so that will, uh, I mean, it fits in there great. I just have to build the mountain around it a little bit. I like the look of that, that's really cool. Quick little update, <laughs> no more cardboard yet, but two key features, there's this wall, and this is going to be my base for that. I was kind of debating where to put it. Still not completely sure I want it here, but I think it's gonna work out well here. I think it'll work out. A little bit close in there, but I'll make it work, I think. Second feature, there's a little split face rock on the right there. I need a spot for that. And so I've made a spot for that here. So now that I have those kind of key features in place, I can start doing cardboard. I also added some wood here so that I can attach cardboard to the back side of that. And we'll see what happens with this. Hey, making good progress. Uh, not gonna show you quite yet. I'm gonna keep going. But I'll show you in a minute. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, gonna take a break for just a moment and do kind of a mail call kind of thing. So, um, in one of the videos a while ago, we talked about this area. This is um, Saint Elmo and whatnot. And this track. Can you see it? Where is it? This track here. That comes out, that's not the one, this one up here. That comes out into this turnout. And this actually kind of goes into a, a hidden reverse loop, just so we have an extra little option to run trains. It's kind of hidden. Um, so to make that reverse loop work, this turnout uh, needs to be able to work automatically off the PSX AR build board. Um, so the issue is getting a tortoise under here. You can't because there's this set of tracks. So I just mentioned in the video at one point that it's like, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna figure out something. Uh, I have to have this an automatic turnout somehow. Uh, but one of our subscribers, uh, Claude, he said he might have something that might help out for that. Um, he mentioned that a while ago. So he actually sent us a box with stuff. We haven't seen it. So we're gonna check it out and uh, it may or may not help out there. I hope it will. A box from Claude. I think it's kind of interesting that it uh, has tape on it from, what is it, Foss Models, looks like. So he's repurposed a box that he bought something in. Okay, knife is not working well. I gotta get a different knife. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cable and actuator. The cable and actuator. Bubbles, oh, I think you can eat these ones, but don't take my word for it, I don't know for sure. Remote tortoise mount. Right. So, wow. There's like two of those. Oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, two of these. Three. Three. Three of these. Three of them. Cool. No. Yes. No. Yes. I think that one's the same. Remote tortoise mount. That has a cable actuator in there. I don't know, maybe that's extra cable or something? Okay. Same number. Cool. Wow. That's like three of them. The idea is, I think we can mount the tortoise on this thing somewhere. I've never used one. Somewhere not under the tor turnout and only have to mount this like under the turnout. And then there's a cable that connects the two together somehow. Wow. Well, cool. Well, we will have to try this out. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. We will 
try this out and see if we can make that work at some point. Good, good to know. Thank you. So one of the things my dad and I did tonight is we actually went through some old boxes that had a bunch of stuff from our old layouts and whatnot. There was some old locomotives that I uh, was curious where they were, some old Ather and Blue Box stuff. Um, but some of them, I'll show you some pictures. Like this one, this is like the first locomotive, like decent running Ather and Locomotive I ever owned as a kid. Uh, so that's like totally cool. Uh, and then here's just some other stuff that again, back in, I don't know how many years ago, but I was, back before I was a teenager probably, we uh, had a layout and this, there's a lot of the stuff that was there. So it was really neat to find that stuff and go through it. Um, and it was around somewhere, so that was kind of cool. Um, so now I'm gonna show you uh, what I got accomplished with uh, Kenosha Pass, actually more of the Palisades area. So let's, uh, yeah, let's look at that. Right, so there's the Kenosha Pass area. Nothing new here other than we have a little bit of life growing. Um, it's amazing where trees can grow. So that's the only change there. But if we come back here, I added more cardboard. <laughs> um, here's the steel girder stuff. I just stuck it up there with some painter's tape. I'm surprised it's still hanging in there. But just to get an idea what that looks like, so that's cool. And you know, I forgot about the Georgetown Loop trussle. I don't remember if that started out as a um, girder bridge, but it's not too, off, too far off maybe to have a girder bridge on this. So anyways, I'm just gonna show you, then I'll explain a little more. So I have this kind of all filled out, you could say. So this is looking good. So this thing I'm gonna say is like the lower half of the Palisades and what's gonna happen there. So. I still need to do, well, let's just look at this. Check this out. So you have this little scene, right? And that's gonna be this. This is my stand-in hydrocal rock. Um, but that'll kind of be that little area. So I made a spot for that. And looking at pictures, it looks like this area just, you know, slopes down like that. Then it kind of goes up into this big cliff. So now I have to do the upper half of this. And uh, I've talked about it, I've thought about it. I think I know what my game plan is for doing the upper half of this cliff area. Um, I found another photograph that kind of shows the top side of this cliff. And <laughs> if I were to do this to scale um, from that locomotive, it would be like, like 20 inches up, like up here somewhere. So I don't know if I'll do that, but uh, well, maybe I'll split the difference, but it's actually really tall. So I have that and then I have this in place for the wall. I'll probably actually end up angling that out a little bit. Uh, and then I made a space for my little coal chute here, not prototypical of the area, but it's what we're doing. And I made some space behind it, so I'll put like a retaining wall of some sort behind there. Uh, so this will work out nice. And this here will be a retaining wall, probably of another sort there. Uh, and then this cliff part, I think, the, or the bridge here, this will be neat because this We'll just kind of flow right through there. Uh, this board here, that's to hold the center support for the trussle, whatever it's gonna be built out of. And Jim, I think, has been working on two bridges for this area in here. We just have these here for now for support. But I think this is gonna work actually really well. And, and it's not a, that part there is steep, this is steep here, and that's fine. There was some seriously steep cliffs in this world. Um, and this ended up not as steep as I thought it was going to be. And really, you could, you could do a lot more with this little area, but I'm gonna kinda keep it simple, not get too busy. It's already a little busy down here. So now from here, you know, where the locomotive is and everything in its depot, from here all the way up, this is all one, one contiguous scene. So over here, right here, I'm going to stop it being one contiguous scene and it'll split out into uh, kind of two different shelves, you could say, as it goes down that way. And that's gonna work out actually really well. So, see in my mind, lots of progress. Like I said, I already have a game plan of how I'm going to 
design this upper part and with that um, I need to do an upper part for back here as well won't be a big cliff or anything it's just the mountains that are back behind there Kenosha Pass area. So this is good. I like it. Here's a little view from our stairs. So um, it still doesn't look like real mountains or anything, but um, it's really like fleshing out now. It's starting to, well, literally take shape now. So this is this is cool. I, I am liking it. So anyways, um, the last few times I thought I'd come out here and I'd be breaking into HydroCal. I still haven't made it yet, but we will get there and we're going to have some cool mountains in this area. So anyways, I think that's it. So subscribe if you haven't already. Tell people about it if you enjoy it. Spread the news and all that. <laughs> Hit the little thumbs up thingy. So, uh, because, well, just, you know, YouTube likes that, they say. So anyways, got that. And ring the bell so you get notifications when new videos come out. And we will see you next time. Talk to you later. Bye. Ooh, progress. But, uh, not, my microphone's facing the wrong way. Look, how to been a scene, I'ma show with it. I'ma buy that action store along with it. Money long limousine, might just go and cruise in it. I seen it on films, what am I doing in it? I'm better, my sweater costs a rack, but that's whatever. However, the weird black seats, heated leather, drive with it. 80 in the pain.